The most impactful books that have helped me as a property investor haven't been strictly about property. As an investor, you need so many skills, including negotiation, delegation, understanding the economy, and you also need a mindset that's gonna keep you on track. So the books that have helped me the most as an investor might surprise you, but I'm gonna share them with you along with the most powerful lessons I've taken away from each. The first book is a really important one for helping you understand why you're doing this in the first place. This sounds really weird, but I literally know someone who ended up buying 200 properties, overstretching himself and going bankrupt. And when I asked him why he did that, he said, well, I didn't know where to stop. I just got into the habit of buying properties. I just kept on going and going and going. So obviously that isn't the exact mistake that most people make, but most people do struggle with understanding why they're doing it, what they're doing it for, if it's something you even should be doing. And the book Die With Zero by Bill Perkins is so good for that because it's the most powerful explanation I've seen about the extent to which you should be delaying gratification today in order to have more tomorrow. And when you're investing, that's intrinsically what you're doing. You're putting in the effort now and you're not spending all the money you've got now so you can have more in the future. So this book will encourage you to, yes, invest and improve your future, but make sure that you're not giving up too much today and missing out on experiences that you can never have again. It also helps with something else that property investors tend to care about, which is legacy. It makes the point that most of us are concerned with building a legacy and having something to pass on when we die. But by the time we die, chances are our kids are gonna be in their 60s and they're not gonna need it anymore. And they're just gonna inherit some random amount of money, whatever's left over rather than something well thought through. So Die With Zero can get you thinking about doing this in a more intelligent way, perhaps by getting them involved early so they learn about the business, or perhaps by giving them a financial stake earlier rather than having to wait until you die. And having a limited company structure is really helpful for that. We've got a video about whether you should invest in a limited company or as an individual, which we'll link to below, very relevant to this. The next book is all about getting other people to do your work for you, which sounds like a pretty great idea to me anyway, but it's really important in property because property is full of 10 pound an hour jobs. If you do yourself everything that needs to be done with your property portfolio, then you haven't made an investment. You've given yourself a really badly paying job. So the book Buy Back Your Time by Dan Martell is a really practical one to help you with this. And at the core of the book is this concept that Dan calls your buyback rate, which is your annual income divided by 2000 hours divided by four. And that number that you get out of the end, that is how much you could afford to pay per hour to get someone to do things that you don't want to do. So obviously if you're a really high earner, then that number could be really big. And it would make sense that that's a big number because if you could earn loads more by working more, you should be doing that instead of messing around with referencing a tenant or going and painting a wall or whatever it is. But even if it's a really low number, even if it's only five pounds an hour, you can still get people in other parts of the world to do jobs for you that can be done remotely and do it for that kind of money. So it could be analyzing deals according to a process you've written. It could be calling agents to book viewings. It could be doing like low level property management. You'd be amazed at how much you can outsource at a really low cost. And like I said, you have to do this if you don't want to have just created a really low paying job for yourself. The great thing about this book is it's practical. It tells you how to do it and it's inspiring as well because Dad will use it his story and lots of other people's stories as well so it makes you really want to do this next up is a classic it's the number one book if you walk into a room full of property investors and say what book are you excited about investing they will all say this book because of course it is rich dad poor dad by robert kiyosaki now the interesting thing about this book is many of us read it in our early 20s if we're lucky and it put us on this path of wanting to invest but if it's been a while and you go back to read it again you might be surprised by just how little practical information there is in there about property. There's hardly anything, and what there is, is either radically outdated or from a US perspective. So you can't really do much with it. But the one thing that it does that's so powerful and makes it worthwhile, despite all the flaws with the book and the series and the wider reached out organization, 
is that it just gets you fired up about owning assets. It's worth rereading every so often, because even though you know it all, it still just gives you that fresh boost of motivation. Now, it's often said that in property, you make your money when you buy. And one of the great things about property is you don't have to buy it for the asking price or even its market value. You can negotiate any price that you're able to. In the stock market, for example, you just have to pay the price, whatever it is. But in property, you don't have to. If you can do a better deal, you can do a better deal. And that makes negotiation such an important skill. And that's why the book Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss is required reading for property investors. He is a former FBI hostage negotiator. So he's done this when the stakes are far higher than trying to negotiate 10 grand off a bungalow in South End. So if he can do it, I'm sure you can take the lessons and apply this to what you do. And this is a book that I've highlighted to death because there are so many little things in there. One of them that I really like is something called the accusation audit, which is before you make an offer, you get out of the way and you verbalize all the things that they might be thinking negatively about you. So you might say, look, you might just think that I'm some cold-hearted investor here trying to drive for the lowest price possible. And they probably were thinking that. So you've just named it and that removes some of the power from it. Another one that I like is asking how questions. So if you ask questions like, well, how can we make this deal work? Or how can we get it done by this date? Then you're kind of forcing them subtly to come up with ideas that help you get you what you want, but it also frames it in a far more collaborative way. So you definitely want to read the book, but then you need to get out there and practice some of these techniques because it's by making them second nature. So they just come out when you need them that's when you start really seeing results. Okay, next up, you might have heard us talking in the past about the 18 year property cycle. If you haven't, we'll link to a video about it below. But the property cycle is so potentially valuable because it can give you clues about what's gonna happen in the future and often steer you towards actions that are the exact opposite of what everyone else is doing. But that turns out to be exactly the right thing to do. So we talk about it a lot, but someone whose knowledge of economic cycles goes far beyond ours is my friend Akhil Patel and his book The Secret Wealth Advantage is just a phenomenal book if you want to get a deep understanding of this topic. What I really like about it is it's set out in a really clever way where each chapter gives you an example year from a previous cycle so the book takes you through the entire cycle using historical examples. And why that's useful is it shows you what you should be looking out for at each point. Because the cycle is only useful if it gives you a view about where we are within that cycle. And there's no one to tell you. So you just have to figure it out by what you see in the world around you. So by using all these real examples and showing how things played out in the past, you can say, oh, such and such is happening. That sounds like a winner's curse phenomenon to me. We must be near the top of the cycle. So this book, I would say, is a must read. And OK, if you insist, there's my book, The Complete Guide to Property Investment as well. So all these other books will help you out as an investor in all these different ways. But if you want a book actually about property, then The Complete Guide to Property Investment, it starts off by talking you through five different models that you can use as an investor, five different strategies. And then it takes you step by step through everything that you need to do to actually execute those strategies. So the whole way through the research, the purchase, the management, and then even selling at the end. So all these books are great, but this knowledge is only really useful if you go and apply it, do something with it. And the way you'll need to do that in property is to go out and make some acquisitions, do some deals. And when you do that, there is nothing more damaging to you as an investor than overpaying for a property. So watch this video next, where we walk you through exactly how to analyze any property deal and give you a free spreadsheet that you can use to help you.